Assalamu alaikum in this video we are going to discuss nutrition in surgical patients After surgery the nutritional requirements of a patient are increased this is due to the fact that the body undergoes significant stress during the operation which causes muscle wasting immune dysfunction and declining visceral protein status so the additional nutrition is required to revert these conditions and to promote wound healing and the resumption of normal activities but if these requirements are not fulfilled the patient may have signs of malnutrition and such patients have a higher risk of post operative complications and death now the questions arise how do we know which patients are at a higher risk of malnutrition what are their nutritional requirements and which route of nutritional support would be most suitable for them in this video we'll discuss the first two questions and the third question will be answered in part 2 For the first question, regular nutritional assessment of the patient will need to be done to identify malnutrition. For which there are several methods available. Like clinical history and physical examination can give clues of malnutrition. If the patient gives history of anorexia, nausea, vomiting, early satiety and food preferences, then malnutrition should be suspected. A simple method of nutritional assessment is to estimate weight loss. If the patient has unintentionally lost more than 10% from the usual body weight in the last 6 months, then malnutrition should be suspected, whereas more than 20% weight loss likely represents severe malnutrition. Another method is by anthropometric measuring techniques, among which the most significant and reliable are BMI, which is body mass index, and MUSC, which is mid upper arm circumference. BMI uses height and weight to provide an estimate of body fat, and it is calculated by formula weight in kilogram divided by height in meter square. These are the scores. If the BMI is less than 16.5, then the patient is severely underweight. If BMI ranges from 16.5 to 18.4, then the patient is underweight. And a normal BMI ranges from 18.5 to 24.9, whereas 25 to 29.9 is overweight. And then there are three grades of obesity. Grade one is from 30 to 34.9. Grade two is from 35 to 39.9, and greater than 40 is grade three. But there are some difficulties associated with the sole use of BMI in the presence of edema, which is seen in severely undernourished patients. The weight may increase, resulting in BMI appearing more normal than the actual value. So in such cases BMI can be misleading and some other technique should be used. On the other hand mid upper arm circumference is another important indicator for screening of nutritional status. It measures the arm muscle and subcutaneous fat which are both important determinants of survival in starvation. Certain lab investigations are also available like creatinine height index Creatinine is a waste product of muscle metabolism. So in the state of starvation, muscle mass decreases and ultimately creatinine levels also decrease. So in this way, creatinine reflects the lean muscle mass and by examining its levels in the urine, we can determine the degree of malnutrition. CHI is calculated by measuring 24 hour urinary creatinine excretion and compared with normal creatinine excretion. So if CHI is greater than 80% then there is 0 to mild depletion of creatinine and the patient is normal whereas 60 to 80% CHI represents moderate depletion and the patient is moderately undernourished and less than 60% CHI means there is severe depletion and the patient is severely undernourished Malnutrition is also associated with defective immune function. So measurement of total lymphocyte count and skin testing for delayed hypersensitivity also reveal abnormalities in malnourished patients. Another useful lab investigation is measuring serum proteins levels. Among which albumin is the most frequently used as an indicator of nutritional status. It is the major contributor to colloid osmotic pressure with a long half-life of 20 days. and perioperative albumin levels have shown to be a better prognostic indicator than anthropometric measurements for morbidity and mortality in surgical patients so patients with albumin levels below 3 g per deciliter show increased risk of developing serious complications within 30 days of surgery other serum proteins which can also be used are prealbumin serum transferrin and retinol binding protein 
these were the methods of nutritional assessment and they will help us identify a malnourished patient and patients who are at risk of malnutrition after nutritional assessment the next step will be to determine the nutritional requirements of the patient so when planning a feeding regime the patient should be weighed and an assessment of daily energy and protein requirements should be made because daily needs may change depending on patient's condition and if we don't consider the daily requirements then overfeeding may occur which is the most common cause of complications so this energy needed to carry out fundamental metabolic functions is known as basal energy expenditure or basal metabolic rate and for most stressed patients it is around 25 to 35 kilocalories per kg per day and it is calculated more accurately by using harris benedict equation this is the equation for men and this one is for women now for the protein requirements nitrogen balance is calculated to make sure that the patient is getting adequate proteins the basic requirement for nitrogen in patients without pre-existing malnutrition and without any metabolic stress is 0.10 to 0.15 grams per kilogram per day whereas in hypermetabolic state it is increased to 0.20 to 0.25 grams per kilogram per day so after providing the required nitrogen through proteins the nitrogen balance is calculated by this formula nitrogen intake minus nitrogen output if this value is positive then that means that the body tissues are repairing and the nitrogen is being used in muscle gain whereas if the value is negative then that shows negative nitrogen balance then it means that the body is not getting sufficient nitrogen and the muscles are breaking down so more nitrogen is being excreted than the intake and in this case the patient's protein intake should be increased so at this point we have assessed the patient for malnutrition and also determined the nutritional requirement now the next step will be to provide the required nutritional support through an appropriate route which will be covered in next video so hit the bell icon to stay updated this was everything about today's video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.